Looking at these luxury surroundings, you'd be forgiven for thinking that I've arrived at a palace. But this building here in Alexandria was the world's second largest car factory in 1906. And to find out more about this stunning building and its amazing history, with me now is Tim from the Scottish Motor Museum Trusts. Hello. Now, Tim, behind us here is a Hillman Imp, which was built just a couple of miles down the road in Linwood. But what actually went on in this very grand building? And so they made cars in here, Argyle cars. Second largest motor factory in the world in 1905 when they put it up, and no doubt, the most elaborate ever built, as you can see as you look around. So was this typical of car factories back then? No, but this was the standard of someone who wanted to impress people when they bought cars and were trying to make the best cars in the world. And he did that by coming in here. So if you wanted to buy a car, you came in here. You obviously had lots of money to start off with because you wanted, you wanted to buy a car. You would be impressed by what you saw. You would then be taken out to the managing director's office and he would then persuade you to buy a car for a few thousand pounds which would be like 50, 60, 70,000 nowadays. Now, Argyle moved from a smaller factory in Bridgeton and Glasgow to where we are now in Alexandria. So how big was this operation here? 2,000 people probably worked here, and they made 6,000 cars in the decade they were here, which for car manufacturer at that time was quite amazing. They came here because they had land, which was not being used, and because Alice Govan, who was the managing director, had been brought up in Glasgow and didn't want to have the same conditions for the workers as he'd seen in, in Glasgow. So they were, they were well equipped for the workers. But one another reason why they came was because there was less industrial strife. But that didn't last. They did start getting problems after Alice Govan died, who was the managing director in 1907. Tim, a fascinating history. We've spoken a lot about what's going on in this building. But let's actually go and have a look at what Argyle Motor Works actually made. And I'm joined now by Ian, who owns Argyle Auto Accessories. Uh, we've got the car that your business is named after, and of course what was made in this actual building. So Ian, tell us about this Argyle motor car that's sitting in front of us just now. Well, this car was ordered by somebody in Canada, I believe, who didn't complete the order, and was then purchased by a doctor um, from Ayrshire. Mm. Um, and his family have actually owned the car ever since. So in effect, it's a one family owned motor car. 90 years after it was born, if you like. You don't get very many one owners. You do Cars still kicking about after 90 years, do you? You don't. This particular one was uh, put off the road in 1939, where it, it had a puncture. Nobody's fixed it yet. <laughs> um, and it was put in a shed in 1939 and then I believe sometime in the 90s the shed fell down and the car was luck. rediscovered so <laughs> but um, they then asked if the Tim who had owned the museum down here if he'd like to bring the car in and look after it um, rather than restoring the car to, to leave it just as a, a museum exhibit if yeah. you like uh, and that's why the car wound up down here so we it is, and it's... Yeah, we're just custodians, I think. <laughs> yeah. all, uh, in all probably, of its glory after 90 years. It'll probably outlast the rest of us, you know. <laughs> so, 20 minutes outside of Glasgow, here in Alexandria. Who'd have thought that we'd find one of the world's largest car factories? Mm -hmm. 